didn't know what looked awkward and what and not. Tommy Lee. First time you get the ammo, then you cock it. First time we had this blast up like a rocket. Hello everyone and welcome back to Hard Hitters first episode of New Year 2019. You know we're coming different. My name is Devontae Richardson. It's my debut on the show. I had to make an appearance. Next to me we have my esteemed colleague. Hi guys, my name is Abby. And I'm Ryan. Welcome back. We're gonna get right into it with our song of the week. First off by Travis Scott and Future off his off Future's newest album. How do you how do y'all feel about the song? It bumps. It, it slaps. Bumps. It slaps. I love anything with Travis Scott. He's a great show and a great artist. Do you listen to Future? Yeah, I listen to Future. Not as much though. Definitive Future Jam for me was March Madness. March Madness. Oh yeah. And yeah. I don't know why I didn't get, you know, that song in my feed, maybe because he's a feature, but I gotta check this out right after the show. Hundred percent. Well, now that we got the song out the week out of the way, we're gonna get right into the first topic. Obviously, Super Bowl is coming up this weekend. Mm -hmm. Who do y'all have? I got the Pats. Yeah. Okay, let me go back. I don't want the Pats to win, but I do think they will win. It, it, like, it sounds because like, it sounds like everybody's really out here. Because, because, because like, at the end of the day, like, I don't know what type of blessings Tom Brady has gotten from Jesus this last two weeks, but they've been working for him. And it's just like the only thing I can say to like the Rams is like stop Edelman, stop Gronk. Like that's the that's what you have to do. Like they can't be doing these five 50 yard passes down the field. They have to be a multitude of small. Like you have to stop them. You have to stop the pass game. Uh, you know, I, I'm I'm right there with Abby. I, I think that um, the magic. I, I don't know if it's Jesus or some type yeah. of some type of cult power that he's summoning to get to all these Super Bowls. But it's it's so hard to pick against Tom on, on on the biggest stage. You know, of course, everybody and their mother, including me, wants the Rams to win. If Tom Brady, um, uh, you know, either he wins and rides off into the sunset, or wins and maybe retires, or God forbid, comes back and goes for another one. But um, <laughs> yeah. the the Patriots are it's almost like it's destined to win this game. But the Rams, I mean, could have been destined for them too. You know, they they really almost we'll talk about it later kind of lucked into the Super Bowl. Oh, yeah. You know, okay. per se, if they want to compete with New England, it's gonna be a, a shootout for sure. Um, you know, the Rams defense, I believe, is well, not even, but definitely more proven than the Patriots. But when you got Tom Brady singing the rock, or singing the pigskin, I should, I should say, my bad. Rock. I'm sorry, I'm, he can be dangerous, but expect, pray not, but expect that Tom Brady comes out on top. Yeah. What do you say? So you think he'll have the pass protection to be able to knock the Rams off? Like they're going to have to keep Brady mobile if they would have any chance of winning the game. Keep him out of the pocket, what do you think about that? I think that you, you're absolutely right, especially with that defensive front. Um, for the Rams, but yeah, got nothing for this. Yeah, no, you shut me well, down. Yeah. It's so easy to get caught up in the greatness of Tom Brady, and like, because, like you just expect him to win this stuff. So, give me a quick score. Mm, 31, 24. 31, 24. 35, 42, Patriots. 35. I'm gonna go say, I'm gonna say 27. Hey, I like those hot takes. So now, as we said earlier, we're gonna go straight into the Saints blown call. Tommy Lee Lewis, the receiver, Miguel Roby Coleman, the um, uh, cornerback that laid out the hit on the Saints player. Um, nasty. We just received an nasty, update nasty. a couple hours ago, according to the Washington Post, that uh, Goodell and the rest of the committee for the NFL are looking into doing replays this year for uh, passing mm -hmm. his calls. Uh, what do you think about the phone call? And what do you think about them implementing replays for uh, passing his calls? So for the first part, the call itself is trash. Like, it was not just like one little, he touched his hand or grabbed his mm -hmm. jersey, he got bodied. Mm -hmm. Like, bodied. And then the ball wasn't even there yet. And it's just like, how do you miss that? You f don't care on what side of the field you're on. You can't miss that now. There, there, was, there was a lot of conspiracy because the refs that worked that game, they were all from Southern LA. Yeah. Every single one of them. That was looked into. And nothing came out of it, of course. The most recent update out of all of this, mm -hmm. aside from the lawsuits and fines going around, was the was the replay by the commissioner. And it, it indeed was. You know, uh, referees normally in a situation like that, referees are, are given the the jurisdiction to kind of uh, let the players tug and pull a little bit if it's going on both ways. But you're absolutely right. That was just a body that could have been arguably helmet to helmet. It could have been targeting. You could have called anything on that, and it was nothing. Uh, granted i'm not a referee but if i saw that happen i would at least like have thrown yeah, something like, for like granted again i've never played football in my life it's just like something had to have been done there like to me that like that's just like poor training 
for all of that. Like, in a high-stakes game like that, you can't really afford it. And, and just the fact that Robert Goodell took so much time to respond to this shows that he knows that this is a horrible PR thing for the NFL. No, it just like... One it, thing like, after the next. Like, <laughs> no, okay, one, he's, he's a trash commissioner. Like, he doesn't do enough for the NFL. He doesn't do enough for the players. He is a straight businessman. He doesn't have the players' interest in mind at all. And he's... I don't even think that he will truly go into this whole replay thing. I think he's just saying it to shut people up. I like it, yeah. Because there could have been more drastic measures taken besides just the replay. Like, that's obvious that you need to have a replay for passing interference. We've been on that. But, all right, then. That's cool. Um, So, we're just going to go straight into the NBA. There have been some hot topics. This week. It's been a hot week in the NBA. NBA trade trade deadline is coming up. And of course, you're hearing some names stirring around the pot. Anthony Davis has been on the radar since, like, the beginning of the season. Mm-hmm. He just informed the Pelicans that even if they offer him a max contract, he will not remain with the team so other teams are going crazy trying to find trade packages for him and stuff like that but ultimately where do you think he will go and where do you think is the best fit for him where I think is the best fit for him like as a growth as a player is is the Lakers Mm -hmm. granted I don't think the Lakers are wanting to sacrifice their players for Anthony Davis at all like like I mean right now like Right now, their injured list is horrible, but at the end of the day, they're strapped. Like, yeah. l- like they're deep. And I think that, like, it's very smart that Anthony Davis is playing this card now because their hands, like, the Lakers' hands are tied at this point. Like, they have their three best players out. Like, yes, they're going to be coming back, but at the end of the day, it's just, like, the, like, the Pelicans' management is trash right now. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know what they're going to do. And I think it's just, like, kind of adding salt to the wound since An- since Anthony Davis wants to leave. Um, Anthony Davis is about to screw the Pelicans by leaving. Yeah. Uh, when he was out, the team went 6-10. and 10. It's not very good. So, um, you know, yeah, there's talk about him going to the Lakers. The Lakers can do, like, a couple. But the packages, you mentioned packages. Uh, they can give him Lonzo. I can give him Kyle Kuzma. They can give him Avika Zubak, and they could also give him Brandon Ingram. I don't think they would. You know, they, 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 they would give him Brandon second. Ingram. They would not sacrifice. You don't think? At the end of the day, Davis is not worth that. No, that's what I'm saying. At like, all. I don't think, I don't think Lonzo or Kuzma should be going anywhere. If anybody should be on that list, like out of like the young players, it mm-hmm. should be Brandon. Ingram. He's starting to hoop as of late, but I don't believe. Lonzo, he's a six foot six point guard that can play defense. Yeah. Moves feet well, and he can score the ball. That's hard to come by in the league, especially when they play defense. Kuzma, we already know his deal. He yeah. Can't go anywhere. Because can, no, because like after you go to the Pelicans, like they're trash. So you think he can be the cherry on top of the league? I no, yes, I do because I do think he can be the glossy part. Like they already have Braun. And that can be like his counterpart. You, okay. Like, like you get what I'm saying? Yeah, but, okay. but him as a player, he's probably tired of losing. He wants to be oh, the yeah, star. Easily. He wants, he to, wants now, yeah. to be the star. So he's gonna go somewhere where he can easily get playing time, a lot of the whole entire game. He can be there for a long time, and probably where they're gonna offer him the most money. In Milwaukee, so my Bucks can Yo, continue kicking I was ass. Talking to my dad the other day, and I was like, imagine. Dude, that's. Yeah. It, I mean, it's possible. I mean, we got we got some players that we could package up too. We could do uh, DJ Wilson forward. We could do Chris Middleton forward. We can even do uh, Eric Bledsoe. We could try to do something like that. Putting him, pairing him with the Anis Antetokounmpo would be disastrous for the rest of the NBA and wonderful for the city of Milwaukee. Yeah. I like that. So enough about you. enough about you. enough about you. all these possible destinations. Another Warriors in the news, obviously, and it's not Demarcus Cousins. Clay Thompson. So apparently, if he's not offered the max with the Warriors, and if AD goes to the Lakers, he will consider joining the Lakers. So first off, do you think that's something that could happen? Even? Well, see, all right, I'm going to start this because then we have we have to backtrack to that conversation because what his part of his little mental plan there is to go if um, yeah, yeah, yeah. um AD. My bad. So, we never really decided on if we think that's going to happen or not. But say it does, um, yeah, th- that would be a good position for him to go, go play there. So, that, that honestly, that was all I wanted to say initially was to make sure that we had that figured out because we just left that. But considering that he goes. So this is my thing: is I think the Warriors, I think Clay Thompson is worth the max. I truly do. Like I truly do. Like if the Warriors were smart, they would offer him the max. He will stay there, and he will hopefully do what they've been doing with Curry, and it'll be fine. But if they, if he does go to the Lakers and they do acquire AD, that Lakers team is not going to be something you want to mess with. Between 
Ball, LeBron, Davis, and Thompson, that's that's going to be one of the best lineups we've seen in a few years. The only problem with Clay, the Warriors not being able to offer the match that they won't have enough money. They have a lot of other players yeah, to worry have about. Enough money too, because they already signed Curry to the max. Raymond Green they too. They have to pay Draymond. They have to pay. The market is getting. The market is getting like better in the minimum right now. He's not even getting paid like that. He team friendly deal. Team. Cut a player that is lower on your roster that barely gets any playing time, and because those players can be replaced easily. Um, do you think that Lakers team will overpower the Warriors? If if they acquired Davis Clay. Braun and Ball, and they all got back? So. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, for sure. Yes. I mean, Golden State already has shown that when they're paired up against another team that's as good, if not maybe a little better, <coughs> Milwaukee. Oh, they, have he, 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 they, he have they have lost. They have lost. The Pandora's They have lost. This isn't on the topic list, but hold on. Milwaukee? <laughs> Milwaukee better than Golden State? No. <laughs> I don't even know. I have no words. I'm just saying, I'm just saying that... I, I just wasn't expecting those two would, to come out oh, at oh, all. Oh, we have, um, make sure you follow us on our Instagram at FGCU ENTV. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, FGCU underscore ENTV. Also, like and subscribe our YouTube channel. I'm watching. I know if y'all are liking and subscribing or not. ENTV, that's all it is, all caps. Yep. I've been your esteemed host, my debut. You already know how it goes. Devontae Richardson, ladies, man. That's what they call me. Oh, good luck. We have. <laughs> Bye, guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for tuning in. See you next week. All right, man. That's our hit. Wait it. First time you get the ammo, then you cock. see you. I'm the host of ENTV's Hard Hitters. I'm one of them. All right. Start.